it's Karen Dahlman here from the Talking Board Historical Society. And guess who I have with me? You guys all know him. It's Robert Murch, Chairman of the Board. Hey, Bob, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. It, it, it's hilarious that it's taken, I don't know how many years to actually get me on camera, even though we're friends and we're in the same group. So uh, it, the pleasure is all mine. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, you're so busy. we got so much going on. We have a lot of events. Uh, you attend a lot of conferences and, and really are promoting all about the legend lore, the, the beautifulness of the Ouija board and talking board. And I think you brought with you today, you're going to show us one of your special boards, right? Absolutely. It, you know, it, the Ouija board's obviously, it's a huge obsession for me. I mean, it, it's, it's <laughs> really? become, yeah, it's kind of overrun my life. And um, yeah, we're working on a great project I think we're going to talk about in a little bit. And, and kind of to, to lead into that, I thought it might be neat to show you something. So we're talking about Helen Peters, Nosworthy, the woman who uh, named the Ouija board and helped get it patented. And this is actually, I got this board and it's really strange, had no idea it had a connection to Helen when I got it. It was a, the very first board we've ever gotten an antique board out of London. So wow. that was really strange and, and that's what kind of caught me on it. So I'll show it to you and it turns out after we did the research that this board came from Helen Peters' sister-in-law. So somehow it got from Helen to them and then the great grandson sold it to me. So let me show you this board. Boy, kind of oh, what a beautiful piece. Yeah, so it's, it's unique. And what's unique about it is, and I'll kind of pull it up so you can see it real good, it's missing a couple things. It's missing the yes and no. Mm -hmm. And it's missing the word Ouija. And we think that's because this is either an early kind of prototype board. It was made special for her. It, it, it looks a little different, and it's a lot more fancy on the back. You can see kind of a, a little well done kind of stuff. And then here's the the planchette for, for people who've seen it. The planchettes look like paddles. Yeah. So you can see this looks a little different. This is the kind of the original planchette. So it's a special piece in my collection and kind of brings us a little bit to kind of how the whole story gets started. Do you mind holding that up again and, and holding it up real high above your, over your face? Sorry, because we want to see the bottom of the board too. Of course. Oh, yeah, it's got goodbye on it, too, and it has the stars. Uh, what era is that, Bob? So this would be real early. So this is somehow like 1890 to 1891, because we know in 1890 it gets named, and then they start putting it on it. So they were selling a board much like this that we call the goodnight board because it had goodnight at the bottom instead of goodbye. Goodbye kind of took over. And um, even in the patent, we see goodbye at the bottom. So good night didn't last very long, and uh, but we did see that on early other talking boards. And so goodbye almost differentiates the Ouija pretty early. And this board, because it doesn't have Ouija on the top, I'm thinking 1890. Uh, yeah, exactly, because they didn't have their trademark patent yet. Exactly. Which kind of leads us into yeah. right Helen Peters and what her role was. Yeah. So our event. Uh, yes, and, and so kind of we're very lucky that Helen Peters and her story, it answers one of the quintessential questions that I've always been asked, and I think most people have been asked about the Ouija board. It, she answers an entire mystery, which is what does Ouija mean and where does it come from? And it turns out, according to those present, Charles Kennard, who claims to invent the board that would become Ouija, and Elijah Bond, her brother-in-law, who patents the board, they both write in 1919 that she's the woman who helps name it. Elijah Bond considers her a strong medium. And though she's not listed anywhere as a spiritualist, I think that it's probably because the board works so well for her that it, it just, it, and it obviously worked well enough because he took her to the patent office to get it patented and prove to them that it worked, which she did. And so mm -hmm. April 25th, 1890, they're sitting around in Elijah Bond's room, and they ask the board what it wants to be called because it, it just doesn't have a name yet. And they were probably calling it a talking board, a witch board, a spirit board, but it didn't have its brand. It didn't have its mojo yet. And uh, they ask the board what it wants to be called, and, and with Helen Peters sitting at the board, it spells out O-U-I-J-A. And when they ask, what does that mean, it answers good luck. And so Ouija, the Egyptian luck board, was born. And so, yeah, it's just an amazing, like, weird story. Like, you know, how cool. And, and then right. when Elijah Bond goes to push the patent, the patent office says, I I'm sorry, but 
we're not going to give you a patent on something you say you put your hands on it and it spells out the answers. They just <laughs> didn't kind of like, mm, we're going to have to prove that. And so they invite them down. Elijah Bond, because Helen is seen as this strong medium, brings her down and they demonstrate it. And, you know, if you go to, if you've ever been to the patent office, it, it's not a super exciting place. I've been there many times. <laughs> but when you go down and they ask you to prove it, you have to show that your, your device does what you claim it does. And so she shows it. And the clerks are just not comfortable with putting their names on this. They really think that they're going to be the laughing stock. According, this is a family story, kind of what happened. And so one by one, they try to prove it. And each one is like, mm, I mean, you know, really want to put my name on this. <laughs> Eventually, they run out of clerks. It goes all the way to the head of the patent office, the head clerk, and he's annoyed. You know, he's got he's paid people to do this. And so he walks into the room again, according to the grandson. Um, and this is what Helen told him. He walks in and says, OK, you don't know me and I don't know you. If that contraption can spell out my name, you've got your patent. And again, with Helen Peters at the board, it spelled out his name letter by letter. And a visibly shaken patent attorney he says, okay, you've got your patent, and he walks out of the room, and sure enough, <laughs> the patent comes through. So, so it, unfortunately, what happened is, is Helen was really written out of history, and, and not, I don't believe it's because she was a woman, because she was a stake owner in the company. She yes. did own stock, and, and again, clearly essential to, we would never be what it was without the name or a patent. Um, but she, she exits the company pretty early, and that just leaves everyone kind of, well, why are we talking about someone that didn't really stick around? And so she leaves, and we don't ever hear about her in 1890. We don't hear about her at all in any articles or history until 1919 when the originators write into the Baltimore Sun and tell their story 30 years later. And, and though they all disagree on who's most important, they all agree on Helen Peters. That's interesting. And thus, Helen Peters, we consider her the mother of Ouija. Right. And we have this great event, you guys, coming up, and it's coming up in September, on September 22nd, and I asked Bob to come on the show so he can tell you a little bit more about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead, so please. We're doing you know, some, some awesome stuff, and um, this is, is pretty cool. Years ago, um, 2007, we found the grave of Elijah Bond, and it didn't have a gravestone. So we worked with the family and Green Mount Cemetery in Baltimore to put in a stone. It is now the most popular gravestone in Green Mount Cemetery. Maryland lists it as one of the biggest attractions in Maryland. And of course, we never thought that was going to happen. And, and the stone is it has a Ouija board on the back of it, Elijah Bond's drawing. So that's why it's so special. Here, um, when Helen Peters left, she went to London for a little bit, which is how her board got there that I showed you. And then she moves to Denver, ironically, where I live now. So, no, I did not move out here because Helen's buried here, but it is a nice coincidence. <laughs> it makes it easier. It's a synchronistic um, event. I, completely, completely. It called me for sure. I think um, so. But once we figured out who she was, which took a while because they don't name her. They just say, uh, you know, the uh, sister-in-law of Elijah Bond. Well, it, he had a few sister-in-laws, so it took a little while to find her. But we tracked her through time. She goes to Denver. She lives here and dies in 1940. And she's buried here in, in Fairmount Cemetery. And she's buried with friends of the family. And so though there are seven people who are buried there in this plot, only four of them were on the stone. Yeah. Not Helen and her husband. So we approached the family. They were so wonderful. Um, and we kind of worked it out so that we've created a stone that has all of the names of the people buried there, but is very Ouija-esque. So it has a lot of the artwork of the yes. Ouija board, and it tells her story on the back. So people will be able to go and visit the mother of the Ouija board and read all about her and learn about her and pay their respects. So that's what we're doing, and, and we're breaking this event into kind of two kind of cool pieces. One is um, we're going to be doing it like how are we – you know, putting the stone in. So we're going to unveil the stone. And I see someone in the background there who is walking behind you who has a T-shirt of the oh, mother. There's of the nobody board. in here but me and you. 
Well, there's someone going back there. Oh, you got a ghost. Uh, well, I have been seeing apparitions lately, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, you never know. It could be, but it was a, that was great. Um, but um, so what we're doing is we're putting in a stone and we're going to unveil it. So at 10 o'clock yes. in the morning on the 22nd, we're going to unveil it. That's completely open to the public. And we're just asking for like a $5 donation because we are a nonprofit. So That's right. all of your donations help. And um, then at one o'clock, we're going to go over to History Colorado and we're going to have a lecture where people are going to have their munchies, some drinks, and we're going to talk all about this and teach people okay. all about this lost history. And we're going to have a great exhibit of some rare boards from 1890 up to the present. And every one of us in the Talking Board Historical Society is adding, contributing to this beautiful museum of boards that day. So, That's right. We're going to have we're going to see the evolution to the beginning of the boards, yep. the very first boards that would become Ouija, right up to today. To the I think the latest version is the deluxe version from Winning Moves. Yes. Little plug for them. It's a beautiful board. So if you're looking for a Ouija board to use and you're looking for a new one. Go to Spencer or Spirit Halloween because I believe it is an exclusive for them. It's beautiful, you guys, and it works really nicely, too. So listen, you can go to our website, too. We've got all kinds of great shirts. The shirt Bob is wearing. Of course, my shirt. Yeah, there we go. Mine's the Gorgeous. new Helen Peters Nose Noseworthy shirt. You can get this, too, there. Any, you guys, if you can't come out, we want you to donate, support us. You could become a sponsor, and your name will be immortalized as part of this group that you are adding right now to history. This is history in the making, and we'd love for you to come on out. So we do hope you can join us. That's right. If you can't, you know, if you can't make it, there's lots of ways to be part of it. And yes. like you said, there's all this merchandise, there's donations. Um, but if you can make it, you know, for all you people who who are part of the paranormal, yeah. who are kind of a little, a little iffy on the Ouija board, just remember, this is history. And, yes. and one of the first devices that spiritualists, your ancestors as a paranormal investigator, used were talking boards. To them, there was not this same connotation that, you know, uh, uh, over a uh, hundred and a quarter years later has gone. To them and people like Helen, this board was just something that people used to reach out to the other side or for entertainment. So. It's part of your history, too. So we're not promoting necessarily everyone should use the talking board. We're saying, hey, you can't deny this is such a huge piece of pop culture. And it's, again, it's history in the making. So come on out and join us. We can't wait to, for this event, and we can't wait to see you there. That's right. I can't wait. Please come talk. Ask any question you want. We uh, obviously were obsessed. You can see Karen. She wouldn't be wearing that shirt if she wasn't as well. And uh, you'll get to see all of us very rarely are all directors in one place at one time. And we're really hoping that's going to happen this time too. That's true because you guys, we live on all corners of the United States. We're from all over. So it's we are exciting. From all over. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> exciting time. Anyway, so you guys, thank you for watching us and listening to us. And I really hope you come join us or support us. And hey, it's happy Ouija every day. <laughs> Thanks, that's right. Bob. So come visit us, tbhs.org. Thank you so much. Bye, thank everybody. You. Bye.